Well, here we are. So AM4 and AM5 is having its kind of crossover point. And uh, a little while ago, you know, AMD actually said that, hey, if you have an AM4, you know, platform, processor, cooler, all that stuff, uh, you'll be able to take that cooler and put it on the new AM5 platform. And we we're all like, hey, that's awesome. That's cool. That sounds great. That'll save 50 bucks or hundreds of dollars, depending on the type of cooler that you have. Well, it's, it's, they should have put a big fat asterisk there. There may have been an asterisk, but it, it needed to be like this big because uh, when I went to Micro Center the other day, walking down the custom water cooling aisle and AIO aisle, uh, yeah, almost like none of them were compatible going from AM4 to AM5. Uh, so that was a shame because I have a build uh, with a you know, 7950X with uh, this motherboard, the MSI Meg X670E Ace. Uh, very nice motherboard, very nice processor. And I have a whole bunch of coolers that are AM4 compatible that I just wanted to slap on to this uh, AM5 platform. Uh, so it's it's not as simple as just taking the cooler off and putting the new one on. Um, now, there are some AIOs, some AIOs that are compatible, which is pretty darn cool. But they're using a, um, uh, I guess, a wobbly bracket that's standard on AM4 and AM5 that most higher end coolers actually don't even use. You know, so they all like to use their own custom backplate and stuff, which makes complete sense because you want the most amount of pressure possible um, within reason uh, to give you a good thermal transfer. So as the processor, like the IHS is heating up, you have some thermal paste, and then you want that heat to transfer to your cooler, whichever one you have, air cooler, AIO, custom loop, you know, what have you. So yeah, I was uh, a little disappointed walking out of uh, Micro Center with not having a compatible cooler for this AM5 because not only were almost none of them compatible, um, they didn't sell AM5 specific ones and if they did i didn't see it but definitely not in the custom water cool area as well which you know i tend to favor so um what the solution was was to reach out to all of my partners vendors and all that stuff for uh, i don't have any vendors all my partners and companies that I actually have am4 compatible aios with and like air coolers and all that stuff and just said hey I have an AM5 processor, motherboard, um, what, what's going on? What do you have? You know, can I buy something from you to make it compatible? Uh, or are you just shipping stuff you know, to make it compatible? Depends on the company. Um, but the first company that reached out and said yes <clears throat> is Thermaltake. And that's what this came in. So this is uh, basically screws. That, that's all it is because this new AM5 platform has no backplate that you can actually attach. So AM4 had their own custom backplates based on the uh, manufacturer for that cooler. Get back here. And um, yeah, so these are just screws, basically, you know? So that's pretty cool. And they give you an AMD AM5 upgrade kit, uh, you know, uh, instruction booklet too. So this is for, I believe, the, uh, the W7 that I have. It's a um, water block that I used on my Destro build. So go ahead and take a look at those past videos. Absolutely loved that build. It was my gaming build in the Thermaltake Distro Case 350P. And uh, yeah, performed ex exceptionally well. So definitely loved it. And so since Thermaltake is the first one to send me an upgrade kit, uh, AKA screws, uh, so I can mount this into the AM5 uh, motherboard, this one in particular. So this may be something that many people are going to be uh, having a bit of a rude awakening when they go from AM4 to AM5 and like, hey, my cooler is going to be compatible because it looks the same. Looks are deceiving. So let's go ahead and uh, remove the water block from this one and put it on this one. This was a 5950X, so, and this is a 7950X, so very sensible, common upgrade that many people will experience. Let's go. So removing a water block or an AIO block or air cooler is pretty straightforward for the most part. Um, I try to do something like this, the crisscross, because I don't want anything to potentially damage Normally you do the crisscross method to apply, uh, but I don't want too much stress on any one particular screw 
and obviously one particular part of the CPU as well. So now these are loose, almost loose enough. And you do want to do your research. So if you have a cooler that you really enjoy, definitely reach out to that manufacturer and be like, hey, I want to still use this. But a lot of manufacturers are coming out with new specific AM5 coolers as well with even in improved designs. Because the way the AM5 processors look, they are uh, vastly different. So they have all kinds of uh, things on the edges. Maybe I'll do some B-roll to show you. But yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna be kind of unique. Do the little wiggle. Save my little rings here. There we go. And so then this, hey, there we go. So that's what the underside of this looks like. And thankfully this is all dried out because I could have just splashed fluid all over the place. And this is the 5950X. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just leave that there because the point is I need this and I'll clean that later. There we go. Where are you? Where are you? There you are. 5950X. Just had to make sure to be honest. <laughs> so let's move the old useless 5950X aside and let's bring in the MSI MAG or M, sorry MSI MEG X670E ACE. Now feel free to take a look at my previous unboxing video and installation video of the 7950X for this thing and because uh, I was very impressed by this motherboard. And so here you go. This thing is a beast. It's got tons and tons of features. It is one of those more expensive early adopter uh, motherboards. So keep in mind, this is like an $800 motherboard. So luckily I'm reviewing it. Yeah. So as you see, this is the uh, 7950X, very different compared to what this looks like, the 5950X. So that's AM4, right? AM4 looking very different and it's sideways too. That's also something that's a little different and interesting. interesting. And then this is AM5. Very, very sexy. I like it, you know, hey. So apparently with these things, we need to screw them in. And the way that Thermaltake actually shows is obviously I have to take these off right here and normally for most clear coolers you're taking this off anyway and then we're going to be putting these in it looks like fat end down right so that's going to be pretty usable and then we'll just install the the other screws that we just took off so that uh that pretty much explains it so let's go ahead and do that real quick and I'm kind of excited because this has been something I was a little worried about because I'm not sure when EK is coming out with their stuff. Uh, I know you can pre-order their AM5 compatible water blocks right now, uh, but pre-order doesn't help me today. And I'm not really sure when they are shipping or if they already have shipped out their uh, kits like Thermaltake just you know sent me today. And uh, but EK is normally pretty good about this. And then there's obviously like Alpha Cool and other companies too. I've just mainly had a very good relationship with EKWB and Thermaltake. So they've uh, been huge partners. So I did a build for, uh, in conjunction with John Redinger and USAA, we built three different PCs, one for the United States Naval Academy, uh, the eSports team, one for the United States uh, Coast Guard Academy, and then another for the United States Air Force Academy, all for their eSports teams. And definitely take a look at John Redinger's channel for those water-cooled builds. So that's what that looks like there. Then the next step would be to clean this block. I like this block a lot. It performed well, so I'm really curious to see how well it's going to perform on this very hot running processor because these will run uh, at 95 degrees Celsius as intended, right? 
So this block did perform very well, but I do need to clean it. But I wanted to at least show you what this looked like. So let's do that. Put this right here for you guys. And what I do like to use is this. This is Arctic Clean 1 and Arctic Clean 2. I've used these in so many of my build videos and it's straightforward. Arctic Clean 1 is good for helping to get that initial dissolve down. And I just use paper towel for this. You know, it's not a big deal uh, because all we're doing is cleaning. And this stuff has been on here for a long time. The proper way of doing this for uh, using this fluid is it says to let it sit for 30 seconds or something like that. Uh, I'm just being impatient right now because I just want to get the, the major stuff off. And there we go. It's good enough for now. So then what we would do is place this on. As you see, it fits very nicely. Perfect. And then we would gather our older, previously used items. Obviously putting these rings down first. And that makes it nice and easy. GG thermal take, good job. And then obviously screwing these down one after another in a crisscross format. And we have a compatible AM4 to AM5 water block at that point. So I'm not gonna screw it down all the way because I still need to like clean the block and because I'm gonna take all this apart. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a video on actually, you know, taking this uh, W7, I think that's the name of this block by Thermaltake, taking it apart and getting the crud out of there. That's not really bad, but I just want it perfectly clean for a 7950X. So that's what that's gonna look like. Really happy, very, very happy. Good job, Thermaltake. And so that's a, pretty much a wrap. Be sure to like save these clips, just kind of put them in your motherboard box. Uh, because you never know, you may go to another cooler that requires those, so just keep it. And uh, if you have any questions on this, you know, going from the AM4 to AM5, just let me know in the comment section. And uh, you guys have been great with all the questions. I'll make more videos actually specifically answering certain qu questions too, because uh, these videos on YouTube are able to be easily searched uh, compared to other platforms. So uh, just let me know what you have uh, on your mind. But this is the MSI Meg X670E Ace motherboard with lots of features. So again, check out that previous video. This motherboard here was the uh, Asus RG Strix B550F gaming Wi-Fi spectacular motherboard. And I, I can't praise it enough. It is a spectacular motherboard and at a great price and getting a processor like a 5900X, 5950X, uh, 5800 X3D if you're a gamer. Uh, was, you know, these are excellent times to buy those types of processors on this AM4 platform because this new platform is out and for most people, most people, you won't see a difference in your daily gaming and workflow as well. Now, if you're like heavy into content creation, yeah, 7950X, you're going to see like 30, 40, 50% up uplifts compared to uh, many of the AM4 platform processors. Uh, and this is DDR5, this is DDR4. So you do need newer DDR5 RAM if you want to get onto the AM5 platform. So there's a couple of different things. And of course, the whole GPU thing with the 40 series coming out, um, I highly suggest people get the ATX 3.0 power supplies. It's not needed, no, but I highly suggest it because you're going to be pumping a lot of wattage into these new GPUs and uh, using adapters aren't always the best thing, especially when um, there's a, a digital connection now between the power supply unit and the GPU so they can talk to each other and adjust for those huge power spikes that happen. Using the adapters, yeah, that's not really happening that much there. So uh, good luck. Good luck if you are using an adapter, um, but I know I'll be getting an ATX power supply unit that is 3.0. So it's just the one cable instead of like one cable and split into like four uh, from the old standard. So, uh, so I've done plenty of videos on YouTube or TikTok on that and other platforms. But in the end, I'm rambling. That's enough. AM4 to AM5, 
in summary, AMD did say that it was gonna be compatible. Big ol' asterisk was definitely needed because a ton of water blocks are not compatible. In fact, I think almost all water blocks, custom water blocks are not compatible because, look at this. This is a backplate that's solid right on the motherboard, right? And then this is a back, great, is a backplate that is uh, part of the cooler, right? So you wanna keep that as well. I'm here dropping thermal paste everywhere. That's, uh, that's enough. All right, let me know if you have questions. Like and subscribe if you like this. Tell others if you loved it and all that good stuff. All right, everybody, peace out.